Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's April 24th, 2014, and here are our top stories. Tonight, more fake news from the mainstream media as the New York Times publishes fabricated evidence of Russian troops in the Ukraine. Then, a Texas deputy sheriff responds to a burglary by killing the victim's dog. That dog has gone with me every day since she was five weeks old. No, no. And the Hate Crime Reporting Act. It's a dangerous threat to free speech. That's up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Our top story tonight, the New York Times publishes fabricated evidence of Russian troops in eastern Ukraine. And this article appeared in the New York Times a couple of days ago, scrutiny over photos said to tie Russia units to Ukraine. They're desperate to portray the anti-government protests in eastern Ukraine as being completely orchestrated and in fact carried out by Russian special forces. Now it would be naive to think that Russians were not having some kind of influence in what's currently unfolding in eastern Ukraine, but that slam dunk of proof that Russian forces are actually involved in directing the opposition in seizing government buildings has proved to be elusive for the Kiev government, the Obama administration and the mainstream media. So instead of finding actual evidence to back up that claim, they decided just to make it up out of fresh air. So the New York Times published these photos, amongst others, which show Russian special forces here operating in Georgia in 2008. And then they show pictures from the recent uprising, the anti-government protests in eastern Ukraine, claiming that this individual is the same Russian special forces soldier seen in Georgia in 2008. As you can see from this image, the New York Times, if I just scroll up here, they actually chose to use a pixelated image of this Special Forces soldier when there's a clear image of him fully available. And again, with this image here, supposedly shot in Ukraine, this individual, they use a very badly pixelated image when a perfectly clear image was available. And why is that? Well, it's because obviously they're claiming it's the same guy. To all appearances, it's not the same individual. Yes, they look similar, but as the BBC notes, in this 2008 image, the Special Forces soldier has a red ginger graying beard, whereas in the image from 2014 from Ukraine, this individual obviously has a black beard that's graying, and it appears that he also has black hair. Although they look reasonably similar, you can see that the face is somewhat different, and the colour of the beard, the hair, suggests that it is indeed an entirely different person. Here's the next piece of damning evidence contrived by the post-coup Kiev government authorized for release by the Obama administration and blithely regurgitated by the New York Times. Apparently, this Russian soldier seen in Crimea is the same individual as this person seen in eastern Ukraine. Now, <laughs> forgive me for not having some kind of X-ray see-through vision, but how on earth can you make the assumption that these two are the same guy when you can't even see this guy's face because he's got a full balaclava on. Yet yeah, this is what was printed in the New York Times as bombshell Loctite evidence of Russian troops directing the activities in eastern Ukraine. Completely ridiculous. And you can see Paul's full report on Infowars.com. Hate Crime Reporting Act, a dangerous threat to free speech. Introduced earlier this week by Senator Ed Markey of Massachusetts, the Hate Crime Reporting Act of 2014 would task the National Telecommunications and Information Administration with filing reports on Internet, radio and television content that seeks to advocate and encourage violent acts and the commission of hate crimes. But as the Boston Herald points out, all it's going to do is have people scouring the Internet, TV and radio for speech that it finds threatening. So they say your speech is hateful. So if you say, I don't like the drone strikes killing a 
80% of the combat non-combatants over there in Pakistan. That's what the Pakistan interior minister said. 80% of the people killed by those strikes are not uh, enemy combatants. You're a racist because you're against the Obama administration. If you don't like uh, Mrs. Clinton, then you're sexist because you don't support Hillary Clinton 2016 because of the Benghazi situation and her lack of accountability on that. Or if you say, hey, I'm going to point out all the inconsistencies in the Boston bombing marathon narrative. Now you're deeply racist. They'll just label you whatever they want to label you. So this is going to be a dire, uh, dire strike against your free speech, not just people in the mainstream media, but also people in alternative media, people who have blogs, just anybody. Don't let this, go, uh, this draconian measure of legislation pass through your state, the state of Massachusetts. Tell them, no, we don't want this in our state, and hopefully you can get rid of this guy, uh, Mr. Senator Ed Markey. Tell him to hit the bricks. And somebody hit the bricks, hit the streets, that is, and was out on the streets educating people about the surveillance state. And we have the headline here, artists create street lights that monitor conversations, but it already exists for real. Wild, Wired Magazine reports that Kyle McDonald and Brian House created the Converse Niche, device out of household objects and a miniature computer, for under $100. And it's made to look like a lamp bulb, but the device can be fitted with any standard lighting fixture. So basically these guys were out on the street just trying to educate people about these things that are already in place in cities such as Las Vegas, where they have these lights that can actually monitor your conversations. And InfoWars has been reporting on this for a long time. I had reports Alex did back in the early 2000s, possibly even back in the 90s. He was going down the street saying, hey, uh, these stoplights can monitor you. They're watching you. If you said, oh, you're crazy because you think that that camera on that street post up there is actually watching me, and now it is. And he said, your phones are watching you, your computers are watching you, your cable boxes are watching you, your Xboxes are watching you. But it's all crazy conspiracy theory till it actually comes true, or at least the mainstream media actually admits this now. And now you're a kook if you don't like it. People say, okay, yeah, the street lights are spying on me as bizarre and uh, weird as that is, but I'm okay with that because I have nothing to hide. I mean, what is going to have to happen before people realize that just because you don't have anything to hide doesn't mean that you should just volunteer your privacy or just say you look into my house do you want to be like in in the england where they want to have people come to your house if you have uh, allegations of some type of child neglect they send a little nanny to live in your house or at least they're trying to do that they already have the cameras out there monitoring people's uh, activities so this is just another step towards that and somebody who took the wrong step was an officer who shot somebody's dog this happens all too often here in the state of texas it's happened several times in the recent years just around the city of austin but now we have this new situation cop responding to burglary kills victim's dog so this was a situation somebody called the police to come and help them because their house had been broken into uh, the thieves stole several valuable items including firearms and two and a half hours later the deputy sheriff uh, gets around to getting to the residence a guy has a dog and lo and behold the dog runs out to meet the sheriff when he arrives the sheriff says hey man i was in fear for my life pulls out his gun and shoots the dog and you know i'm not a fan of uh, willy-nilly using pepper spray and tasers but if you have those things why can't you use those instead of just shooting the dog dead and you can watch the video on infowars.com say hey man I was, I was in fear for my life and the guy said, you know, I have a small dog. I mean, I'm not sure how big the dog was at the time of the of the shooting, but he says my dog was small. It wasn't going to hurt you. But the officer felt that his life was threatened, and that's what he had to do. And it's it's very sad. We also saw things happen right here in the city of Austin. Justice for Cisco, to be brief, an officer responded to an incident at the wrong address. Well, he was given the wrong dress, address, shows up and shoots somebody's dog. He says, your dog was charging towards me. He's like, my dog was in the front yard and greeted a stranger. Why did you shoot my dog? Shrugged his shoulders and walked off as if nothing happened. So that's the kind of things that you have to deal with. And hopefully we can get justice for this man because justice for Cisco was never really served. But you can do justice to the fight of liberty and you can join prisonplanet.tv. We'll tell you this before we go to breaking. Stop by prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. The Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the rants, and so much more on prisonplanet.tv. Now stay tuned because after this break, our new crew member, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, is going to be talking about the, uh, the injustice that happens at the VA. You go in, you say, I need medical treatment, and they put you on a waiting list basically to die. He's going to be talking about that. And also Syrian girl. Mimi Alahan will be joining us to talk about some of the new war drums being beat concerning the serious situation. So stay tuned for both of those. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. We have reports that a conservative 40 veterans have died over the past two years waiting for medical treatment. This is absolutely unheard of, absolutely unnecessary. And for more on this, we go to a true military veteran, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. 
Thanks for joining us, Joe, and welcome to the team. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, America, get ready. This is what government-run health care is. Welcome to hell. That's right. It is hell. I mean, because we see the socialized health care. We see it in other places. We see it uh, in England. Our own Paul Joseph Watson is over there. And he said he went to the, uh, went to the doctor to get some medicine. They just gave him uh, this dinky little health care pack. He said, no, I have some real health care issues. And now we're seeing these things start to come over here to the States. Well, what's interesting is that I had a lot of friends talking about, oh, it's going to be so great. Free health care for all. Government-run health care is going to be amazing. And I just laughed and laughed. I mean, I've been with it for 10 years. It's mm -hmm. horrible. I mean, I, it's been two years since I've been to the VA. I throw up blood almost every night. And I've been constantly trying to be seen. And it's something that they put you on the back burner. They make an appointment. They take that appointment away. And they just keep doing it over and over again until next thing you know, you've got something that is just horrible and it's too late. You know, they got a VA a veteran who died from cancer. He begged and begged and plead for them to help him out. And now he's dead. Yeah, that just if, shows you. If you get anything for free, like you go out to a, a, some marathon or whatever, they're giving out free water bottles. Anything that's free, it's cheaply made. It doesn't work well as opposed you can go buy your own, you know, 20 bucks, and it works great. So tell us about your experiences when you went out to the VA and how you were pretty much got this uh, substandard care. Well, when I got out, they said, you know, you're, you're in for a, uh, a treat. Fast, uh, fast uh, times, you know, Medicare or uh, medical uh, pills and all that stuff would be getting to you really fast. Mm -hmm. And it's just not like that at all. I mean, the first day I waited an hour, hour and a half just to have someone tell me that I was in the wrong line. <laughs> and then they sent me to another line. And then when, they, when I told them what was wrong with me, they said, no, that's not an issue. All we need to do is just throw some pills, give you that and be on your way. That was about two years ago. Since then, I haven't been back. I've been trying to make appointments, and I just can never get through. I mean, it is a horrible, horrible disaster. Now, have they ever tried to give you any type of uh, psychotropics? Uh, that was while I was in. But uh, up until about a year ago, I finally dumped all those medications in the, uh, in the toilet and flushed those down. And since then, I've been a lot better. So it's like, okay, there's nothing wrong with you puking up the blood. Just take these pills to alter your mind to make you think that it's pretty much okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I can't sleep now to this day. I mean, eventually it's getting a little bit more and more. But I was on these drugs for so long that I was a zombie. I mean, it was just horrible. And Joe, I know you have a lot of information here. What's the most important things that people should know? Well, America, what you have to look forward to with Obamacare is exactly this. Everything that you've asked for, you're going to get. And all I want to know is, are you going to be on the next death panel? All right, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, thank you for your time and welcome to the team. I uh, look forward to more reports and you can see Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs on Infowars.com. Stay tuned right after this break for more special reports.